Okay. Um, now let's see how we can set up a global context. Basically how we can provide some data to all components in our application. Now for this one, I will create a new application just because I want to set up everything from scratch. And if you want to access my final application, basically the application I'm about to create, I will add it to the main repo in the Z assets folder. So as I'm recording this video, of course, that folder does not exist. But by the time you're watching the video, just go to the main repo, effectively where you got the advanced react and then the last folder should be there. And the name is going to be Z assets. And in there, you'll find this application. Now, if you're interested, you can also try to set it up yourself, in the global context. And here are the steps. I'm going to create a new application with feet. And we're going to go with npm create, and blah, 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 blah. Then we'll install dependencies and run npm run dev to spin up the dev server in the source, create a context JSX file, and set up two things, a global context with create context, and a component, which I'm going to name app context with one state value. Now, from the app context, return a global context dot provider, the component, and then wrap the entire application, which we're going to do in the main JSX, and there's going to be a gotcha. Effectively, we'll have to jog our memory on the children prop. So if you're struggling to set this up, this is totally fine. Now, once we have wrapped our entire application, then we want to set up a custom hook. So we don't have to import two of those things when we want to access the context and then just try it in app JSX. There's going to be app JSX and in there, just try to log whatever you have in the value prop in the global context provider. And if you can see some value, that means that it's going to work everywhere in our application. So let's get cracking. And I think I'm just going to copy and paste. There's no need for you to watch me how I type this. So I'm just going to go with CD desktop. Then let me massively zoom in, copy and paste again, npm create beat latest, then global context. That's the name of the application dash dash or hyphen hyphen space dash dash template. And then we want to go with react. So once that is done, I'm going to open up a new window because I might want to showcase something in readme. And this is again, totally optional, but I'll set them side by side. So there's my browser. That's my text error. Let me open up the integrated terminal. We want to go with NPM install. And we also want to go with NPM start or I'm sorry, it's not create react app, we want to go with npm run dev. And I know I already have said this quite a few times. But if both of those commands don't work, one after another, just run them separately, the result is going to be exactly the same. And once I open up 5173. This is what we should see on screen. And since we're now familiar with the use state, this shouldn't look very foreign. We have count, set count, use state. And what do you know? Every time I click on a button, I'm increasing the count. So now let's set up that global context. Please do that in a source. So don't do it in a public or the node modules. Let's create a new file here. And I'm going to call this context. So new file. Let's go with context and JSX. And first, I guess let's set up that global one. So first, let's go with const, I'm not going to export that because there's going to be a global hook, basically a custom hook that's going to set up everything. So I'm going to go with global context, and that is equal to create context. And we just want to invoke that. That's the first step. After that, we want to set up the component, which we're going to return from this file. And I'm going to call this app context. That's going to be my function here. As far as what we're returning, well, 
we are going to return a global context dot provider, correct? So let's go with return keyword. And then let's set up that global context dot provider. And for now, we don't have anything in there. So we're not going to set up the value. And as far as what are we going to set up in between the component tags? Well, that's the gotcha that we're going to discuss in a second. So for now, don't return anything. And of course, we do want to export that. So export default. And we're looking for app, app context. Okay, good. Before we set up the value, why don't we also create the actual state value? In my case, simply going to be name and set name. And as far as the default value, I'm going to go with Peter. Okay, good. And then remember, there was a special prop on this provider, and the name was value. I do want to pass in the object in here. And inside of the object, there's going to be a name property, and also a set name property. Let's save that. Now both of them are effectively passed down. But of course, we haven't wrapped our entire application, correct? And as a side note, I don't know whether I covered this before, but in ES6, essentially, we can do the shortcut. So if you're looking at it and you're like, I don't understand, how are we passing here name equals to name? Well, if we have this kind of setup, where the property name is basically equal to a variable, and the same over here, so set name is equal to set name, we can shorten this up. Again, if you have this kind of setup, then essentially you can shorten this up and just type one. In this case, name and set name. Okay, good. We have covered that. So now let's navigate to the main JSX because we want to wrap our entire application, effectively our app component, and it's located over here. So unlike the nav bar, where effectively we imported a nav links and then the user container inside of the now, links. now we want to wrap our entire application. So we're not going to import, for example, app over here. No, we want to go to main JSX. We want to import our app context. So the import is in place. And now this is really up to you. If you don't want the strict mode, if you don't want those extra logs and all that, you can simply remove it or just place the app context within the strict mode. Just please don't wrap the React strict mode in the app context. That's not going to make sense. So we want to go here. We want to set up a app context. And yes, I'm basically creating a new component. And I'll just remove this one over here. So now we're good to go. But there's one gotcha. The moment we save, we're going to see nothing on the screen. And if you're wondering why is that happening? Well, remember long, 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 long time ago, we talked about the children prop. I believe it was all the way back in the fundamentals. And at the moment, if we take a look at the context, notice we have nothing in here. So of course, I can type here context and everything is going to be fine. It's going to be displayed on the screen, but essentially that's not the goal. So I want to grab that app component. And then since all my components are going to meet over here in the app, I want to wrap it in the provider. And as a result, all my components are going to have access to, in this case, name and set name. How we can do that? Well, I kind of already gave you a hint. Since app right now is within the component tags, now we want to go back to context. And essentially, we want to access the children. We have a few ways we can go here with props. And then instead of the silly context, I can set up curlies and we can go to props dot children, or of course we can just shorten this up and set up the structuring. And as you can see, the moment I save, everything's correct. So now everything is going to work again. This is totally up to you. If you want to go with props, in my case, I'm going to go with children here and then I can remove the props as well. Before we go to app JSX, let's also set up that custom hook. In this case, I'm going to export it right away and I'll call it use global. 
context. That's my custom hook. As far as the functionality, I want to invoke use context. So please be careful. Most likely VS code will try to invoke the same one, the use global context. We don't want to do that. Essentially, we want to go with use context, which is coming from React. Again, this is a special hook that is looking for one thing and one thing only. It's looking for the context you want access to. In this case, it's going to be a global context. Since we're exporting this, I can nicely hop over to app JSX. I know that I'm getting back the object, correct? So I'm just going to go here, const, and the structure it right away. I'm not going to look for set name. Hopefully it's clear that I'll have access to both of them. And that is going to be equal to my use global context. And I just invoke it. And just to showcase that everything works, I'm going to log name. So if I go right now to my dev tools, I'll see Peter, which means that any component that is going to be in the app where basically all our components meet, it will have access and not only those components, but if I have any components inside of those components. So hopefully that is clear. This is how we can set up a global context using context API. And also hopefully you see how useful is our custom hook, where now we don't need to do those two imports in every file. Essentially, we just grab the use global context and we're good to go.